The Russian Defense Ministry claimed that Russian soldiers had regained control of 10 settlements earlier captured by Ukraine in Kursk Oblast. The statement follows reports claiming that Moscow had launched a counterattack in the embattled Russian region, which has been partially held by Ukrainian forces since the start of the cross-border incursion. President Volodymyr Zelensky confirmed these claims. Everything is going according to our plan, he said. The Ukrainian crowdsourced monitoring group Deep State wrote that the situation on the left flank of Ukrainian forces in Kursk Oblast has worsened. Russians began active assault operations, ferrying armored vehicles across the Syme River and other smaller rivers. Ukraine was previously targeting bridges and pontoon crossings across the Syme River in an apparent attempt to cut off Russian troops in the Glushkovsky district. But Russia's defense ministry released footage showing what it said were pontoon crossings being built over a river and Ukrainian military vehicles destroyed by Russian troops. It said the videos were filmed in the Kursk region. Recall, over a month ago Ukraine launched a daring incursion into Russia's Kursk region, partly in the hope that Russia would divert its troops there from Donetsk. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Russian forces have started counteroffensive actions in the region but insisted that Ukrainian troops had anticipated such a response. Zelensky earlier said that Ukraine controls over 1,300 square kilometers and around 100 settlements in Kursk Oblast. According to Kiev, the incursion was meant to divert Russian forces from Donbass and to prevent further Russian cross-border attacks from Kursk Oblast. An explosion occurred near a checkpoint of a military unit of the Russian guards in Ekaterinburg city on September 11, the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine reported on Thursday. The agency described the attack on Russian military checkpoint as an act of retribution for Russian crimes committed in the occupied territories of Ukraine. The explosion was carried out by guerrillas in Russia with the help of Ukrainian intelligence, the agency revealed in a statement published on Thursday. The explosive device made with a total mass of 6 kilograms was secretly planted near the checkpoint of the Russian guards. As a result of the explosion, the enemy's army personnel were blown up, and the vehicles of Russian criminals were damaged, the main intelligence directorate stated. Russian sources reported that one person was injured during the attack on Ekaterinburg, while the Russian Anti-Terror Commission stated that the threat had been neutralized. To eliminate the consequences of the explosion, Russian special services and ambulances arrived at the scene of the incident, and a medical evacuation helicopter was lifted into the air. Earlier, the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine identified 30 people from the command staff of the 112th Missile Brigade of the Russian Federation involved in the shelling of Sumy and Kharkiv regions. It should be noted that Ukraine has stepped up attacks on Russian territory in response to Kremlin's targeting civilian infrastructure in Ukraine's territory. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met with leaders of the Baltic states in Kiev on Thursday. According to the president's press service, the parties discussed the strengthening of military and technical cooperation during the meeting with Latvian Prime Minister Evika Silina. We face hybrid attacks almost every day from Belarus, now drones are flying over our country, so we are here to learn from you as well," Silina told Zelensky during the meeting. Lithuania's president Gitanas Nauseda told Zelensky that the West needs to push away red lines and allow Ukraine to use Western-supplied weapons against military targets on Russian soil. The sooner we understand that we have to push away those red lines that we draw too many times in our heads, the sooner the victory of Ukraine will come, Nauseda said. Military assistance was also on the agenda during the meeting with the president of Estonia, Alar Karas. We appreciate Estonia's decision to allocate 0.25% of GDP to Ukraine's defense needs every year," Zelensky wrote on his social media page following the meeting with Karas. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
But I'm happy that uh, all your team uh, is doing and uh, how you are representing your country. It is as well encouragement for us uh, to learn from you because we are a borderline with Russia and Belarus and it is not always easy for us as well. We have uh, hybrid attacks uh, almost every day from <coughs> Belarus. Now drones are flying over our country so we are here as well to learn from you. Courage and your prayers is really a good example for all of us, and I think for especially for the Western world uh, to understand that we have to do anything in our hands to continue to support the Ukraine victory because Ukraine is doing incredible things on the battlefield, and uh, there sooner we will understand that we have to push away those red lines. The, through on so many times in our head, there sooner will come the victory of Ukraine. You're very welcome, Mr. President. Thank you so much. And um... now I understand the most important at least also for us, is to, to lift these restrictions put on, on uh, weapons what we, you get from, from West, West. So we have been supporting or have been on this position on the very beginning, including myself. But uh, it's justified that uh, you are allowed to use these weapons to, to target and uh, target military um, infrastructure on, on, on Russian ground. So, uh, and I hope that uh, our allies, especially US and UK, will allow to do so in many different ways. And